Meanwhile, Halberard of the Dunedain struggles to decide the best course of action for the rangers under his command. Welcome back everyone to Piney Plays the Beorning and we're at the first of several interludes to go back and wonder what is happening down in Dunland with the Grey Company. My brother returned from his sojourn to the mountains, and he says a small group of warriors makes their way hither. More of the Falcon clan, I asked him, but he was not certain. He has gone back to Radanir to cut them off from before they arrive. We have been through much, my friend, and will certainly see more dangers before we find Aragorn. But I feel I must ask, why do we linger in Tau Methadris? I understand much hurt has been done to us here, and the desire to avenge the falling is great, but the delay may prove deadly. So why are we delaying? Then you agree that the time has come to leave? I'm glad to hear it. You should tell your men. Some of them have expressed a desire to leave soon. So let us go and tell our men that it is soon time for us to leave this place. It wouldn't be a moment too soon with all these earth tremors. Hello, Sarton. We are preparing to leave. The rumbling of the earth is getting worse, Halbred. I do not like it. Yes, it is time for us to leave. That is wise. I have already decided it was time to leave, and I wanted to see if you agreed with me. I wish to leave Talmuth Adris, but I wish to travel north, not south. North? Why north? Many of our brothers have fallen on the road, and it grieves me to think that they must be laid to rest in these hostile southern lands. They are Dunedain. They should be brought back to the northern lands they held dear. I propose to bring the bodies in a wagon back to their homes. I do not wish to abandon us, to abandon Aragorn, but our brothers deserve more. Do you agree? Good. Thank you. I will see to making the arrangements at once. All right. That's one that we've spoken with, but he will not be continuing with us on the journey. Of course, when you consider that not all the members of the Great Company survive, <laughs> that maybe it could be just for the best. Oh, well, yeah, have to do it all over again. Uh, let's see, can we get rid of Rural chat. Okay. Cornier and I have been collecting the weapons of the Falcon Clan left behind when we drove them into the caves. This accursed shaking of the earth is making it more difficult than it needs to be. Yes, and we are getting ready to leave now. Well, that is an impossibility, though, Halbred. We cannot leave yet. Luke Brennan still lives, and his cronies. We cannot have forgotten the wounds they gave us, and the lives the treachery cost. We must have our vengeance upon him before we go. Well, that may be difficult if he's way against here. It's too dangerous to leave him behind us. Lou Brennan must pay for his betrayal. Habret, I agree with Goladir. The Falcon Clan is too dangerous to ignore. Hmm. Well, that's going to make things tough. What do we have down in this way? What is Calinglad's opinion? Hello, Calinglad. It'll soon be time for us to leave. Did you feel those rumblings in the earth, Halbarad? They are getting worse. It almost sounds as if... Well... Well, it sounds as if a great beast was running beneath the earth, shaking the ground with the fury of its passage. Could there be such a creature? Hmm. 
You may think such musings are a province of children's tales, but I have seen many strange and wondrous things in my life, Alvarez, and learning of these wonders keeps me putting one foot in front of the other. If there is such a beast, we must know if it poses a threat to our people and to the good people of Dunlet. Shouldn't we? Well... Can you say in absolute certainty that the shaking of the earth is not a threat to us? It, I cannot. And it is one of my worries. So, so far, we have one person who wants to leave, but in the other direction. We have one person who wants to investigate this rumbling in the earth. We have another pair that don't want to leave the falcon behind. That's quite a bit. Hello, Radonir. And do you have a reason why you don't want to leave? Because I've been proposing this and people are giving me reasons not to go south. You have stumbled in the middle of a surprised attack, Halbarad. Are you willing to fight alongside me? <laughs> no, 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 no. You are, you are on the right side of the ambush this time. We are doing the ambushing. Eladon and I have lured us... We were the small group of Falcon Clan back here. They think they have us on the run, but they're about to be surprised. Are you ready? This way, and quietly. Shh, be very, very quiet. The elf plays us for fools. He has given us the slip. Yes, there we go. Time to get revenge on the Falcon Clan. Well, Maybe not the entire clan at the moment. At least some of them. The Hubuk warrior. And there we go. Oh, well done, well done. I am not... I am not used to being on this side of the ambush. Uh, did you choose not to help because you were busy with your wit? <laughs> mm, oh, hello there. This is the situation in which we find ourselves, Halbred. The Falcon Clan harries us from the mountains and caves into which they fled. The earth shakes and rumbles more and more with each passing day. Our numbers diminish the further south we travel, brothers and friends lost to death or to the urgent need of distant lands. You are our leader. What road or roads do we take from here? How then does the Grey Company proceed? Yes. How from here does the Grey Company proceed? Meanwhile, Cyrodon of the Dunedain travels north with the bodies of his fallen brethren, determined to lay them to rest. We are back here along the old way, wondering what has happened to the Grey Company. Now we are following Cyrodon and finding out how his journey south goes. Hello, Radnir. I am sorry I made a stop, Sarton, but something is not right. Do you feel it? I feel a chill in my very bones. I have not felt such a dread since... Well, I do not wish to say. We have driven the wagons with the fallen brothers this far already, and we have much further to go yet, but I want to set my mind at ease before we proceed. Uh, do you agree? Then walk with me for a short way, and we will not go far. All right. Saraton, walk with me, if you will. All right, we'll walk a little way. The chill intensifies. Do you feel it? Yeah. Well, we are in this bone bales area. Stay alert, stay alert. We will try to. We will try. Alert for something, I hope. Oh, uh-oh. Oathbreakers! Oathbreakers from the Forsaken Road. Hmm. 
Well, not good. Not good at all. Stay back, faithless ones. I will not tell you again. Saraton, ready yourself. We have seen how little honor these have. If the pup reaches for the fire, it is burned. Who is to blame? The pup or the flame? Really? I offer you no words of contrition, Dunedain. If you seek out men such as we, you deserve any ill that befalls you. Learn from the lesson and put your trust to those who deserve it. We abandoned the mountains, thinking to escape the chain of our suffering, but there was no f escape from it. There was no end to our days, no relief from the night. Only fools stumble upon us, and those paid with their lives. If you seek the dead, only death awaits you. But my people learn from yours that our curse may yet be lifted. If an heir to Isidore lives still, as your kin pretended, that glimmer of hope may be rekindled. We love you not, but we will not slay you this night. We will return to the mountains. We will not come this way again. To the mountains we return to await the ending of the curse, if such a thing may be. So they are returning to the paths of the dead. And perhaps some of them will be around when Aragorn arrives there, but that's not for now. I do not think that you encounter these men again, Sartan. Many of our friends and brothers were slain at their hands. How many went beneath the earth along the forsaken road, and did not return into the daylight? Good men all. Yes, those oathbreakers have abandoned the forsaken road, Sartan. Now is the time for us to return there to rescue, rescue the bodies that were forced to leave behind. We must bring them back above ground to the wagon of the fallen. We must do this at once. Let us go quickly. All right. And here we are at the Forsaken Road. Ooh. The question is, is there anything left here? This place holds mainly painful memories, Sarton. Let us find the bodies of our fallen kinsmen and leave as quickly as we are able. The oath breakers may be gone, but there could be other dangers along the forsaken road. Well, that's always likely. Rats! Uh, come on. Rats! Rats! We've been facing all these other little things. And we get troubled by rats? They are forsaken rats! <laughs> Good. Diseased rats, apparently, because I have all these disease things that are coming all around me. Uh, we must save them from the rats, yes! Oops. Well, I suppose uh, I'm not surprised there are any bodies left after what the rats can do to them. Not too sure what this dot. Make your own luck. Saraton is unusually lucky, especially for the Duna. Surprising good fortune often reveals self and the decline of melee effectiveness of his foes. Oh, okay. That's an interesting ability. Vile things. Let's go. Continue. And. And drive away the rats! Drive away the rats! Ooh. An area attack is very useful against rats, I have to say about that. Five diseases? Good grief! Oh, ah, body of... Of a ranger. Okay, that's one down. 
or one taken back up, I guess. You gaze upon the fallen of Holthon, and think of the delight upon his face each time he recovered a curious artifact from the ruins of Anuminus. Many were the nights you spent warning yourself by the fire, while Kalinglad explained that Holthon, the historical significance of the artifact he had found, and the memory brings a smile to your face even now. This grim rose should not be his tomb. You and Radanir will see to it that he rests as long among the shows of the New Year that he so much loved. Holthon lived in service of the Great Company and fell upon the Forsaken Road. Alright, let's go to the next one. And of course, it's obligatory rats. Uh, we, we can't go through here without more rats, right? Of course not. Of course, as many rats as we can find. Right, that's next. Okay, can we just... How about if the rats just leave us alone? See, if the rats just leave us alone, we don't have to kill them. I mean, I'm sure. Maybe there are other things around here they can eat other than these bodies? Ah, another ranger. Another ranger that has died. Calithil kept to himself, and in that way he was much like Aragorn, your chieftain. He strode often in the Troshals neath the moon, and it was he who introduced Radanir to Elenweth at Thorntod. He used to jest that he did it only to make things difficult for Radanir. He will rest more easily beneath the trees, perhaps a stone's throw from the sound of the loud water. Calithil lived in service of the Grey Company, and fell upon the Forsaken Road. And more rats. Alright. Just get away from here. I need some rat traps. That's what I need. Rat traps. And stay down. And fallen ranger number three. Linor was well known to you. For he lived on the reef fields and often visited your cabin to share a meal and news. He was generally well regarded by man and Bree Hobbit alike, and it was Lenor who helped uh, Burl Pearson construct the frame of the farmhouse south of Bree Town. Lenor did not range as far afield as many of your kin, and his decision to join the Great Company was not an easy one. You hope he knows somehow that his service was not for nothing. You and Radanir will make sure that he is laid resting among the comfortable hills of his home. Linor lived in the service of the Great Company and fell upon the Forsaken Road. Ah, no rats this time! Thank goodness. But I sense more ahead. You gaze upon Himmeldeer's face in deep sorrow. For you remember how much he argued against coming to the Forsaken Road. He believed the words of Aragorn should not be trusted, and thought seeking beneath the earth for the honorless ones was a foolish journey. He spoke to it to me in private, and shared his concerns with Candace, but in the end he agreed to walk the Forsaken Road. For that point onward, you heard no complaint from him. And he descended bravely. I am sorry, him, oh dear, he whispered to the fallen form. Be at peace, kinsman. We will not leave you here. Him, oh dear, lived in service of the great company and fell upon the forsaken road. And of course, I'll this is telling glad. Well, at least I think so. 
Oh, Cal Candate. If it were me, Candate, I might not have tried telling falsehoods to the undying shades. Ah, I am sorry, my friend. Candate. Candate was dear to me, and I still keenly feel the pain of his loss. He often came to visit my cabin in the mid Breelands, and many were the nights that the two of us spent in quiet conversation about the events of the day. The conversation became more serious and more grim as the shadows deepened in Middle Earth, but our favorites were always be those that were full of smiles and laughter. We came back for you, my brother. We should not have left you here for even one day. Forgive me, Candace. Candace lived in the service of the great company and fell upon the forsaken road. I am ready for us to carry the fallen brothers outside, Sheridan. Let us not delay. They have remained in the terrible place for too long already.